Wisconsin locks up tens of thousands of people at any given time. A lot more than most other places in America. Usually, it's for a good reason. For almost every prisoner, there is a victim. But we can't lock up every offender forever. The majority of those in the system will be out in the next few years. So, what are we doing to help these individuals succeed once they've been released? Not enough that works. About 30% of people who get out of prison in the state of Wisconsin are back inside within three years. And they leave behind all kinds of new victims and broken families, employers who can't find people to work for them, and a lot of disgruntled taxpayers. Taxpayers kick in a billion dollars a year in this state, and they can't afford it. We can't afford it. We need a new model. This is not a partisan issue. Americans who used to just focus on punishment, conservatives, law enforcement, cops, realize that that's not enough. We need a new way forward. That's the conclusion that they've come to. That's what we believe at the Badger Institute. The Badger Institute, working with the Woodson Center, searched nationwide and found an effective approach that can be replicated. A prisoner reentry program called Hope for Prisoners, which helps ex-offenders succeed through employment training, character formation, and one-on-one -on -one mentoring, involving some of the least likely mentors and one of the least likely founders, a man who spent many years inside a cell himself. What John Ponder and the Hope for Prisons has done in the city of Las Vegas has just been phenomenal. How he has uh, put together an effort that helped reclaim the lives of people who have been in prison. We're taking men and women who are coming home from the prison system. Instead of leaving them out in the community by themselves, we're coming alongside them and we're helping them to get acclimated back into their home. When we can help men and women take their rightful positions inside their home and raise their families and their children don't grow up making the same mistakes that, that they have made. And when we help them to find gainful employment, you're taking people who were once wards of the states and burdens to the taxpayers. When you get them paying taxes, they're helping to be the fuel in the economic engine of our community. The Badger Institute introduced the Hope for Prisoners model to policymakers, law enforcement personnel, and community leaders in Wisconsin. These, in turn, worked together to launch Partners in Hope in Milwaukee, guided by the same mission to provide opportunity and prevent recidivism. Partners in Hope is a prisoner reentry program uh, where we, we develop faith, we nurture hope, and we model love in life and in work. And our desire is to see guys coming out of incarceration have the resources and the connections around them so that they can reenter society in a productive way. We went to House of Correction to, to select 10 prisoners to come into the program and 37 men showed up and the look on their face when they realized they couldn't all go with us was heartbreaking. Without Partners in Hope, basically, I would be probably doing the same thing I was doing. I'm just letting life go by. For them to put me back into the workforce and give me the knowledge that I need, it was really good for me. So it was a win-win situation. I got two kids, so basically my long-term dream is to be comfortable, financially stable, and just to be able to support my kids. My dream is to accomplish, finish school, um, get my license. I want to own my own landscaping company. Partners in Hope is a unique collaboration between diverse organizations, Milwaukee area employers, and law enforcement agencies. Participants engage in full-time work and activities designed to help them succeed in their workplace, at home, and in the community. By breaking down some of these silos that exist in the city and perhaps around the state, if we break those down and bring everybody to the table, I think our men and women have not only hope, they have a chance, not only survival, but thriving. We got a, a job readiness skills, um, personal life skills, we learn things from like healthy boundaries to a healthy lifestyle and changing like the cognitive criminal thinking pattern. We have numbers of employers who have called us and said, if you have somebody who you would suggest, please send them over. We'll start many of them at $35,000 a year and up. So there are opportunities that are very livable for these men and women. 
the involvement of law enforcement personnel in the training and as mentors is countercultural and life transforming for both parties. One of the issues that I like about this program is that it gets law enforcement and offenders together. It uh, gets them to realize that they're both human beings. They both have different needs. They have different perspectives. And uh, although there are consequences for when we break the law, uh, it's important, I think, to, for them to hear from law enforcement that after they've paid their dues, that there is forgiveness and there is a welcome back to the community and that we'll support them in uh, heading in a more co constructive direction. Uh, my mentor, Ryan, been good, you know what I'm saying? Our relationship been so far so good. You actually got to see them for them, and you ain't get to see them in their uniforms. So it was a person person. It wasn't you bad, and you good, and you good, and you bad. They let you come up with your own goals, and then they push you to do it. So that's it's a win. It's a win. I do have a desire to work with people that are coming out of prison, and I feel like law enforcement in general has a responsibility to do that. We, sh I think, should be there in order to kind of meet them on the other end in order to keep them from reoffending, that somebody believes in them and that they consistently believe with them. And maybe even more so if it's a law enforcement officer because of the fact that relations can be really challenging between those two groups. When I saw law enforcement and these men coming straight out of House of Correction, sitting at the table together, talking together, even after the program had ended, this is amazing. This is an organic, face-to-face, life-changing, perspective-changing episode that's happening right in front of us. That partnership with law enforcement is such a win-win on both sides of the equation. This is why it's so very, very important. If you take a look at the narrative across the country, uh, people don't trust the police, and I believe that the reason why they don't trust police is because they are not in relationship with the police. You know, what relationship could you ever be in where trust is established unless there is life rubbing up against life in the spirit of complete transparency? Out of that transparency comes the relationship, and out of that relationship uh, becomes trust. The program begins with an intensive week of training on topics from parenting to recovery to financial literacy. Participants then graduate into the 18-month mentoring program. Some of these men and women have never graduated from anything to anything. This is a new thing for them and their families. We graduate them into their future life. I am so unbelievably proud of you for this decision that you have made to go on a brand new journey in life. A brand new journey of second chances. Everybody in this room has confidence in you. The mentors that are gonna be meeting with you are hopeful to see how you're going to make our community stronger. But it's important that you take pride in doing this. You've accomplished something. And I hope that you're gonna stay with us and work hard and get through the whole program and accomplish even more. In the presence of all these present, that I will fully embrace this opportunity for a new life. So help me God. Congratulations. Government is not going to solve this never-ending cycle of incarceration. It's in civil society that people find opportunity. Their lives are transformed and people are empowered to take charge of their own destiny. People worry about um, people coming out of prison and falling back into the same pattern of predatory behavior. But what I have seen is that once they have been transformed and redeemed and they are introduced into that community, they act as a force for healing. <laughs> and they are therefore ambassadors that go in like antibodies and recreate themselves in that environment, which has the consequence of creating an immune system. And I think that's what the nation is looking for. To learn more, please visit badgerinstitute.org.